if I look at comp prep, I never set out to be a comp prep coach. I just got handed a comp prep client, realized I really enjoyed it, got a good result. And then I was like, this is awesome. I want to go down that path. So it kind of formulated the direction I went. Um, I think when you're dealing with the psychology with clients, there's two things that you need to understand here is what kind of client are you dealing with? And then what kind of coach do you want to be? Right. Because I think the the key component is if you're authentic with your approach and what you want for your clients and how you communicate with them, then your clients are always going to respect and trust the information and advice you're giving them. Right. I see this with some of my coaches here as well. I take a very like, no, can I swear on this thing or not? Is this like full? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I take a very uh, no bullshit approach in terms of what I do. So my expectation is when a client comes into my doors to train with me, it's like you're committed to getting results or not. If you want to fuck around, it's like I'm happy to get, give you someone else that you can go and do whatever you want to do, but that's not the kind of coaching that I want to do. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm a super hard ass and just like abuse my clients. That's not what I'm saying. But it's like at the end of the day, my philosophy is this. It's like you're here paying and investing to get a result. It's like why would you come in and train with me and coach me if you're not going to commit and you're not going to do as I say? right? That's why you're investing in me as a coach. My approach with that with my clients has always gotten gotten great compliance and always obtained good results for me. When I see some of my other coaches trying to adopt the same principles, it doesn't really come across that well because it's not authentic to them and it's not the right type of clients to be taking that approach. So, I think that's the key component on one thing you need to identify is the clients you're dealing with and the type of coach you want to be. That's first and foremost. Secondly, I think you need to, as a coach, you need to upskill yourself in communication and I guess how you deal with people on a day-to-day life. And I guess giving yourself tools and strategies um, to be able to provide your clients the support they need when they need that. So for instance, if I have, if I relate this back to a lot of my comp rep girls, as we know, Um, some of these girls are under a lot of stress. Um, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, self-image issues based on social media comparisons, this, that, like, you know, like working a lot, family issues, partner issues, all that kind of stuff. Right. So if I have a client that comes in and they've had some form of issue at home and my approach is just like gun ho, come and do the work and irrespective of how you feel, we just need to get the results. That may not be the best approach for the client at that time. So I think understanding how to adapt to your clients and their needs and being a bit more self-aware and in tune with how your clients are feeling when they're training with you in relation to the phases that they're doing with their training, right? So it's like if your clients are going through a really stressful period of life, bringing them into the gym environment and absolutely smashing them and impeding on recovery and not focusing on strategies that are going to support their overall general health is not going to be great for that client. You're just going to run them into the ground, right? So that's kind of the thing for me where, you know, I got told this by someone the other day that I needed to be a little bit more empathetic with my clients. And it was, um, I was like, okay, that's interesting because in my opinion, I was doing in my, I guess, mind a great job in terms of coaching my clients. And I was having people come into the gym being like, I'm super scared of not doing the work because I'm worried that you're going to get angry at me. And I was like, well, that's not really the kind of, I guess, perception I want my clients to view me as a coach. Like, but it was getting a good result, right? So obviously obtaining feedback from my clients in terms of how they were feeling and what they needed was also a key part for me as well. Really understanding that, okay, I actually need to keep the intensity with what I want with my clients and keep the same approach of being super accountable for them and keeping them accountable to their results and really guiding them to the direction I want them to go but also understanding that I need to be empathetic and listen to what their needs are and be a little bit more adaptable in that approach. Um, So that's probably the best way that I can explain how to implement more psychology in relation to your clients is one, get regular feedback and how they're feeling. I mean, feedback's always going to be the best thing for you guys as coaches with results anyway. Um, I believe that the coaching relationship is not a one-way street, it's a two-way street. So it's like the best thing that you can do as a coach is get information from your clients on how they're feeling, um, you know, their motivation towards their training, how they're perceiving the the actual programs, like how they're feeling about the relationship with coaching and so forth as well. And if you can nurture your clients through this process and really make them feel supported, 
then you're always going to have a great relationship with open communication, which in any relationship, that is always going to be the key fundamental. That allows you to break down barriers and that allows you to go deep in the areas that you need to go to really identify how to obtain better results with your clients and really how to optimize their commitment and performance in the gym. But it also allows you to build better relationships and long-term, I guess, retention with your clients as well.